Good afternoon. And um, I'm going, my other title for this talk is The Ignored 73%. Um, I'm talking about the second surface of the planet. And I'm going to be your Captain Nemo for 15 minutes. Because there, there's not many of them. Um, did you know, for example, that 25% um, of the Earth's uh, heat vents through the seafloor along chimneys like this? These were modeled in 2009 by Como et al. And um, we, we have only discovered and uh, seen a handful of them. OK, the home planet. And they are trying to scare us. Just see what I wrote during lunch. Um, I've got some. Um, the alarmists are trying to scare us about ocean acidification, OA. So what is the true situation? We don't know. Because the true situation is hidden. And did you know what the average uh, water depth under my keel is for the total planet? This is my boat, by the way, inboard, south of the uh, Cape, south Cape of, uh, of Norway. What is the average depth of water under my keel, global? It's 3.6 kilometers believe it or not, 3,600 meters. We'll come back to that soon. So the surface of the Earth where we live is wild, changes constantly from Viking Age till now. For the climate, the water is the joker. And you know that because of latent heat and all that stuff. I've been for 38 years in a company called Startoil, very kind, nice company to work for, because I could more or less do my own research. And not being an academic, rather an engineer, I could publish without using my elbows. I wasn't in the academic system. So you can visit my site on ResearchGate and see what I've published. Um, this is my favorite, the ROV, Remotely Operated Vehicle, because with that, you can go and look at things on the sea floor. This is the Pisces 5, the underwater vehicle, which is manned. I went down to 200 meters in that in 1985. And these are some of the survey ships that I've been using over those 38 years. This is what a seep looks like, a vent looks like on the seafloor. This is the second surface here, 77 meters deep in the North Sea. And you have a methane, me methane vent or a hydrocarbon vent. Methane, ethane, propane, butane is coming out of that naturally. And there are thousands of them on the continental shelf. We call them cold vents because they don't have temperature anomalies but they have pH anomalies. So here we are on, this, on the second surface. Just show, go back there. Um, inspecting a pipe. We have lots of pipe, pipes uh, to the UK, to the uh, continent with gas. This is my home, um, 77 days per year or something like that for 20 years. And this is my toy that I can use more or less freely if I like to. And this is what we do when we take samples at seeps. This is at 723 meters water depth. And guess what the temperature is off mid-Norway at 723 meters? What is the temperature of the water? Minus 0 0.0 degrees centigrade. It's sub-zero. So what are we picking up? We are picking up methane-derived orthogenic carbonate from this rock here. 
We have two ROVs in the, in the, in the place at the same time. So we're playing with two ROVs here. We're using one to photograph the other. Very rare occasion. And this is what a seep looks like without ebullition. There are no bubbles coming through here. But you can see the discoloration of the seafloor due to an oxic environment. So when you have a seep, the, the water goes anoxic. And you get, then you, um, you get the bacterial mats and you get um, tube worms growing to feed from the methane, ethane, propane, butane coming up. That's food for them. So you have um, these organisms which are chemosynthetic. And while we were there, we got another beast coming in from the right. What do you think this is? Is it a crab? No, it's not a crab. We thought it was a crab. It's a giant pycnogonid. pycnogonid. This size is, is a spider, deep water spider. It's got eight legs and some tentacles. Um, OK, we have to go on. Um, where you find cold seeps, you find um, methane-derived orthogenic carbonate growing on the seafloor, carbonate rock. You find often ebullition, and you can take samples of the bubbles with, uh, if you have the right equipment to analyze the gases. You find reservoirs of, of shallow gas being pumped through the seafloor during the tidal cycles. So it's a dynamic system. Here you have wolf fish, redfish. This is in the UK sector of the North Sea, not far from the 40s here. Um, Erwin Suss published this in 2010. It shows you the um, event of cold seeps that we know of, the, the red ones, and those that we infer. And they are located along the plate boundaries for the most part. Along many of these places, we also have gas hydrates, uh, which form due to the seepage of methane from deeper down. OK, what did the Vikings know? They knew about, about the kraken, strange creatures, creatures uh, suddenly appearing up from nowhere. And they knew about the Midgar serpent. What was the Midgar serpent? that went uh, 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 round the whole Earth? Well, we can just guess. It's this. And it's 55,000 kilometers long. What is it? It's a spreading ridge. Did you know that no part of the ocean floor is older than 250 million years? Why? Because it subducts below the continents. It dives down and, and gets lost into the mantle after so and so long. This is where all the vents are. And if you believe that there is one hot vent every kilometers along the spreading axis, then there must be 55,000 vents, and each of them producing about one megawatt of heat. Wow. Did we know about that 20 years ago? No. When were the first vents, hot vents seen by man? 1977. When was the first chemosynthetic organisms found? Two years later. Because it took the biologists two years to get out there and look at what the geophysicists found on the seafloor. Why? Because the biologists were sitting with their legs up. They had discovered everything on the planet that was worth seeing, and they had museums stacked full of the descriptions until the chemosynthetics came along. So that was last century's biggest discovery, the hot vents. OK, this is a profile across, uh, for example, the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean. 
Uh, the average depth is 3.6 kilometers. The maximum depth is about 11.5 kilometers. The PCP here is where water stops boiling because of pressure. If you heat it up from below, uh, b uh, beyond this uh, boundary, it goes super critical, which is a new phase. It's the fourth phase of water. It's not vapor. It's not liquid, something in between. It's got the density of 0.3, supercritical water. So what is the temperature down here? It's 1,200 degrees. The mantle is 1,200 degrees. And look at the thickness of the oceanic crust, which is 60% of the Earth's surface. It's only 8 kilometers. And it varies between 0 kilometers at the spreading centers and 8, 9 kilometers. The continental crusts are up to 200 kilometers thick. They don't feel the heat from the internal, but the ocean does. When NOAA in 2009 discovered this thing off Samoa, they said, wow, this is a curiosity. It's not. It's a basic fact. This is going on all over the place where you have heat coming up. So these are the hydrothermal systems. When you have a big uh, temperature gradient of 1,000 degrees per kilometer, you have a forced convection. It has to be forced because you are boiling or you are uh, you're turning the water supercritical and up it goes. It has nowhere else to go. And then it has to pull in more. So you have this fantastic cycle going on. And you get uh, these structures, which are called chimneys, hydrothermal chimneys. This one is called Godzilla. It's uh, 60 meters high. It's boiling on the top, and it's supercritical down here because it's just crossing the boundary between um, where the water stops boiling. This one has supercritical water inside because you have a black smoker and you have all the particles coming out. As the supercritical water hits the ocean water, which has 2 degrees centigrade, it condenses into normal water and it uh, precipitates all the minerals it's carrying. This is a cross-section of the Earth. The inner core is solid. Outer core is uh, more plastic and you have um, an well. And we don't want to go into that. But this is the Pacific Ocean here. That's the oceanic crust. Here is Africa continent. Here is South America continent. This is subduction. This is subduction where you have collision between the plates. One goes underneath the other and one goes over. So this is the system we are talking about. And the ocean is above that, of course. Uh, the Red Sea, which is about 2,000 kilometers long between Arab Arabia and Africa, is perhaps the most anomalous sea in, in, in the world. Why? Because you have spreading going on in the center of it. You have hydrothermal systems going on, and they are producing salt because they are using seawater. And seawater consists of about 3% up to 15% here of salt. So every time it goes down to the supercritical, the salt precipitates. And it, it, it has to be stored or it's pushed up. We are trying to figure this out, what's going on. So that's what I'm doing research on right now. It was discovered, um, sorry, it was discovered, ah, sorry about that. Yeah. Look at the pH here, 5.2. This is at 2,000 uh, meter in the Red Sea, pH 5.9. That's because you have a hydrothermal system going. pH 5.7, pH 8.4 as you come into the normal Red Sea water. This was discovered in 1948 by the Swedish expedition Albatross. The chlorine here is 15%. The temperature is nearly 70 degrees centigrade. 
So the people taking the uh, bucket up to the surface, they burnt their hands. They said, oh, this is hot. What is that water doing down there? We have figured it out now, uh, but uh, we have still a far way to go to understand it. So the Red Sea is over here, and these are mid-ocean ridge unconfirmed hydrothermal systems. These are the confirmed hydrothermal systems in red. Some of them are active, some of them are dead. There are thousands of them, and we have only seen a few. Oh, sorry. We're soon there, yeah. Um, then we have the undersea volcanoes, which my next uh, colleague is, um, uh, next speaker is talking about. This is um, Bay of Plenty in uh, Northern Ireland, uh, New Zealand, the Kermadec Ridge, which uh, um, they are studying and drilling into. This is the Brothers Volcano with a, a plume above, and it's producing salt also. Sorry, uh, this way, yeah. Now, let's look at the, the carbonate compensation depth in the Pacific Ocean versus the Atlantic uh, Ocean. The depths are different. And why is that? It's because of the hydrothermal systems, the ring of fire uh, that is going on in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Finally, 50 meters below surface, this is Scott, 2008. This is the ocean deserts of the Earth, where you, don't, where you hardly have any production in the surface, and the pH is very low. This is the uh, North Atlantic. So, it's not as we are told. If, um, so, here is your take home message. We know very little about variations in ocean alkalinity, locally, regionally, and globally. Therefore, ocean acidification is, well, I've got one equation. Nonsense. OA equals BS. <laughs>